This is the story of a Palestinian artist who left his own ruined country in Gaza, moved to Turkey, tried to find her space, tried to study art, to tell the Palestinian story. Ragda, she just got married. She left with her husband, came to United States to find her space, to tell her story. Ragda is a self-taught artist who's trying to tell the Palestinian story in America. To be here in your studio, your own Thank private you. place, I'm invading this privacy. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in Gaza until 19 years, and then I got married. I moved with my husband to Turkey. I was trying to, uh, to enter any of the art calligraphy, you know, schools in Turkey. But at that time, in the 2000s, it was uh, almost impossible or prohibited for hijabis to attend any schools in Turkey. So I just gave up on that dream um, until I moved here to the U.S. That was 2002. But I did not start art school because it was, you know, had, had a little bit of conflict with my beliefs um, as I had to go through a uh, different perspective of, you know, program itself that it has to deal with nudity and, you know, specific, you know, agenda, which is, you know, it was against my, my beliefs. Really? So, well, I mean, you don't look at it as like an artistic... <laughs> artistic expression, but, you know, when, when it's this fine line that exactly, goes yeah, between, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, the artistic and then the beliefs, it, it would be, you know, you have to give it up one of them. So I gave up again on that dream. I studied nursing instead. So I finished my nursing degree. There's Just no, what out of the blue. It was like... There's no nudity in nursing? No. <laughs> it was different. No, it was... Okay. Um, yeah. I finished my nursing degree even though I had my three kids. I, I had my youngest was six months old when I went back to school. Graduated. Wow. Um, and, you know, I've, I practiced for a few months until I had um, an injury in my back, which has prohibited me from practicing anymore. It's a lot of drama. So at that time, I decided to bring my art alive by myself. So I did not attend any school. I liked art. I grew up, you know, just sketching, um, doing posters from a school, you know, at middle school and, in, and high school. That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. We've learned calligraphy at the younger age at schools. It was something mandatory that we had to learn how to write in cursive and we had all of these full notebooks of calligraphy. So it was something that um, came in, um, you know, positively that served me. And this is how I started my art again. I started with calligraphy in, in art, you know, and exploring some areas and landscape and nature scenes. And slowly, slowly, I was like, you know, developing my, my skills until I end up doing now almost everything in realism, mm. photorealism. So um, between still art and, you know, I end up with the love of portraits now. I do portraits a lot. Well, I realized I'm, I'm an artist when I was invited to my first exhibition. I was like, oh, and, you know, the, the people reaction to my artist was really encouraging. I mean, I was like, OK, maybe the, the American people would not appreciate much of the calligraphy as long as they, you know, because they don't understand it, maybe. But yeah, the, the reaction was really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in the Arabic language, we do have like 11 fonts um, in calligraphy that you can masterize. Uh -huh. um, every, one, every font of these, it has its own uh, measurements and flow and shapes. Um, and it's, it's an art by itself. Mm -hmm. um, I do love most of them, I mean, all of them. Uh, my favorite is the Diwani and the Othmanic, it's like, <laughs> which I was hoping to, to learn from, <laughs> from a master in Turkey, <laughs> I, but I could not. <laughs> but you know, with, it, it's funny, yeah. But with a yeah. little bit of practice, mm. uh, you can get there. Whatever. You have really the freedom to do anything with it in, in terms of, you know, placing the words on top of each other, how you organize them, how the word flow um, into each other. Um, I started with mirroring the words, even if it's one or two words, which was um, something, um, you know, it, it would look magical, it would look like a, a piece of, you know, um, uh, maybe, uh, 
a shape or figure or something, even if the people could not, you know, understand or reading the font, but at least they would be like, you know, mesmerized with the shape that they're looking at. Um, and it, of course, you know, the transition or translation, the, um, the oriental um, art, which is, you know, we have in the Islamic, you know, um, era, they invented all these shapes, you know, from the geometrical shape to the complex, where how you line your, you know, Mm -hmm. You know the lines with the with the colors and and the font itself and, and the flow. Ragda, as a Palestinian artist, uh, she had to reflect to the horrible conditions uh, that is going on back home. Uh, uh, she has to go and visit and talk to people and uh, kind of tell their story in artistic way. The, the survivors of the last war, which was which was on the two. 2021. For the last, I would say, 10 years, we managed to visit at least once a year. Um, and during our visit, we would do um, our little medical mission, me and my husband, he's a physician, I'm a nurse, so we would be collecting, mm. you know, medical supplies from here, and we would be traveling um, crossing the borders from Egypt to Gaza with all the hassles and, you know, getting these supplies in with minimal troubles, I would say. At the time, yeah. Yes, for, for the timing. So, um, in terms of my artistic journey, when I finished my medical, you know, mission, I would go out, interview with a journalist, interview some of the survivors that would, you know, I would be collecting you know, different stories from, from people, how they managed their life during the, the war um, in 2021. And yeah, one of them was Sarah in here uh, behind me. Her story, she was the only survivor of her, fam of her family. And she survived because she was displaced with her uncle family. So there is a tra tradition in, 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 in Gaza when the war happens, they would switch kids. That's in case if the whole family was targeted and killed, oh, wow. one a person, one. one person would stay behind, you know, to, to carry the, the family legacy to or to tell the story. So Sarah was switched with her cousin. She was staying with her uncle family. I visited the site where they were living and I could see, you know, the they How half old was shattered. Sarah, Sarah was seven, seven mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. Was she aware of what's going on? She was aware of uh -huh. what what's going on. Of course, with her playful uh, way, she was talking to me. I was actually going to interview only her uncle's family, but something drew me to this little girl. I mean, the journalist was talking to the family, and I was like, you know, touring the site and their house. They had a little farm, and they had the little bee, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Hive. Houses, hives that they would, you know, you know, care for. But I was like, and she was standing beside like a big, huge, like fish tank. You know, they would be, you know, breeding fish too. And I just started talking to her, and she was like, you know, comfortable to to tell me that, you know, how how they lived during the war. And I and I introduced myself to her. I was like, I'm I'm an artist. I I draw people. I showed her some of my work. She got excited and, you know, I was like, what do you think about, you know, shall I paint you? She was like, yeah, paint me. So I was like, okay, just talk to me for a little bit because I need to sense, mm -hmm. you know, her, her vibes, her mm -hmm. personality, just to put it in, 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 in the painting itself. Uh, she was she a was really strong girl. Uh, I mean, even when she was talking, oh, the only weak point that she, she you know, reserved until the end when, when she told me that the only thing scares her when the sun comes down. That's when the bombing starts. Yes, and this is where the Jesus. bombing would start. I mean, she would be fighting all night to keep her eyes open. So she wouldn't, you know, she, she do, do not want it to fall asleep. But eventually she will be yeah. falling asleep at one mm -hmm. point. But yeah, um... But she had something in her eyes, I mean, just 
like I could Haunted feel the, the haunting. There was, I mean, I interviewed her with, you know, I was, you know, videotaping her with my phone. And then I was like, okay, just feel free, run around, be yourself around your, you know, the area. So at once she jumped over that window oh. and she was peeking to me and I was like, just stay there. Yeah. So that was her peeking behind the window that, you know, of the room that she was sleeping at. That room was, you know, full of bullet holes all over. Yeah, but I could see her, you know, I mean, I mean her eyes was peeking a lot. So uh, in the process of painting her, I had something, I mean, I had a vision, but as, a, as you said, as an interpretation for the reaction of this war, um, I had to add the kofia on her. She had a different outfit mm. that time, but I just completed it um, at the end of last year, which is when, when the war started in Gaza, after October 7. And it had totally different outfit on her, so I had to repaint it just to add the coffee well, on were her. Were you in contact with her uh, ten years later? Do you know where <sighs> she is? Now? I tried. I tried my best to contact anyone really? who knew her. You know, yeah. just to just to know if she, at least she's still alive or not. But well, she's here. She's here. Yeah, but I, I hope she survived this war yeah. too. Okay. At the beginning, it, it was it was tough. I mean, I could I could barely you know, lift a brush and, and do anything. I mean, it, it's, you know, just to, to put yourself in the mental state that I'm ready to create something and separate yourself from, you know, all what we see in the media and the news channel. Um, even though my, my family, my entire family is still in Gaza. And, you until know, today. until today, my whole family, I'm the only one outside Gaza. So you contact them? I, uh, that's, that's the bare minimum that we could, we could use, I mean, I mean to contact them and, no, no, that, this is my, my ninth week now. I haven't heard anything from any of my sisters. I mean, I did not How talk many to, your family back then? um, my parents, my, uh, my four sister and three brothers and each one of them has their own family. So mm. with kids, um, we would receive a message from one or two of them every like three, four days to say like, we're still here, we're still alive. Um, they've been displaced at least nine times in different areas in Gaza. Um, eventually every two of them now living together somewhere. Some of them, they're still on the, in, in the north, some of them just moved to the southern, some of them, they're just in the refugees camp. So it's, it's been tough to even think about it, mm -hmm. um, especially at the first two days of, of the whole, you know, situation when it happens on October 7. I had to see my whole neighborhood coming down. I, I've seen my home, my home on, that I grew on up television, on, social media. on on television live. And you recognize it? Yes, yes, I recognize my home. I recognize my my family home that I grew up with, my, my in-laws home when it came down. And it was, you know, uh, it was tough even to contact them. It was like, just let us know if you're alive. So you're living it every minute. So it was tough to, to be creative or to, to be yourself again, I would say. But yeah, you notice uh, something about your portraits, the eyes, I mean, you focus yes. a lot on the eyes. I, I love to focus on the eyes. I mean, the eyes can, you know, speak a lot, you know, portraits. I mean, you can't, you can't let the person speak through the portraits, but you can see a lot in their eyes. I, I like to capture, I, I either take my photos in different angles, but then I would choose something that it would, you know, it, it would, Tell me a story. Tell me something behind their eyes. Um, I might show the the hands get her too because the hands speaks too. But I would I, I would you know choose my first choice would be the eyes. It's it just speak. Yeah, I just finished my dad's portrait in here, which is the middle one, just recently. That, um, well, did you show him? The... I did. What I was did. The he loved it. He loved it. At the beginning, he was like, my nose is too long. I was like, no, it's not. I just, you know. a relationship between father and daughter in an artistic way. He is, he is my, 
my first, I would say, um, fan. Yeah, that's that's what I love. I still have my first um, oil paint kit that he gifted me when I was 10 years old uh, to the library. He would bring me all these big posters, every paint and every pencil and every markers. Um, and, and, and the, you know, at, at this library, it's like, just go ahead and create. Imagine your father visiting your uh, studio here. I wish. I wish. Mm. Yes, sorry. Okay. I believe he would be, yeah. Is but I wish okay? to see him again. He's wow. the smiling, cheerful dad. In the midst of all this, you need something? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let's celebrate. This is, a, this is, a, this is, this, this is, is a cinnamon great. stick. A cigar, this is a veggie cigar. cigar. <laughs> Wait. I'm gonna keep it, thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> it's healthy and you look cool. You know? I love it. Yeah. yeah. That was the moment to celebrate to celebrate art, to celebrate life. Ragda, in her own studio, the Kali Art in Minitanka, she tells a Palestinian story, one portrait at a time. We'll see you next week.